You know what? This is actually a really, really clever way to do this. Honestly, I don't know how we've never seen this before. Hey, it's on guys. Welcome back to Clash of Eric. I'm still on the road here out in California. We just finished uh, hosting the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge out here, and uh, we had a good time with that. I hope you guys were able to come out and watch it, but we are into the upper bracket finals of the Rush of Clans tournament. We have Space Station Gaming and the Queen Walkers who have emerged all the way up to the top and very likely the winner of this war is going to be the winner of this tournament that we've been following for weeks now. But let's see if they can make it happen here. Pete Castro kick us off with a... Looks like a Skelly Bat Donut into Lalo here as he starts off with a Skelly... Bell to take out the DC, Bell to take out the Inferno, and now he'll want to dive in his Queen to go out to the Town Hall, and I guess if the King is able to go and get the Eagle Artillery and the Scatter Shot and the Defensive Queen down with the support of the Road Champion, he pick up some really, really good value there and make the rest of the packs here very, very easy. The Queen has a couple of Giants, just holding attention to those Expos, keeping the damage off of her. The King will get pushed off to the right here to go and uh, work with that Road Champion. Clean funnels here, and a nice setup so far from P. Castro. This is uh, almost a picture-perfect uh, setup here. Uh, there's not much um, happening issues that I perceive that can really cause any problems with this, but he immediately starts in that stone stuff to work with the Road Champion. Go after the Eagle Artillery, and if he can cut off its pathing, and drive it into the multi-inferno in the middle of the base there, he's going to be in a really, really strong spot here. He's going to engage the defensive king with plenty of support there to keep his world champion alive and moving, but look at this. He doesn't even put the Lalo in from the bottom. He puts it in from the far left side. Dragon Riders and the Slammer are working in from the bottom after that multi-inferno, and he's able to get the ward ability to protect some headhunters onto the defensive world champion, and they easily connect with that. He's got the freeze into the lock down the scatter shot. The world champion ultimately got cut off and forced into that multi-inferno. And this is easily going to be a triple, guys. He's got over a minute left here. I'll go ahead and try to get the Roar Champion alive and moving. But with the Dragon Runners, with the Warden still alive, the Slammer is still intact, which means the Crypt Center inside of it are still moving as well. Looks like you'll have no problem picking this up. It is going to be an opening triple and some early pressure here for the Queen Markers to match it. So, nice attack there. Very, very well executed. That was absolutely picture perfect. And I like the... I like the mix of the Dragon Riders and the Lalo to go after different sections of the base. Stars is live! Coming in with a Blizzard Lalo. Favorite attack here of Stars. Where does he want a Blizzard here? The Town Hall looking like a pretty juicy target there. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Looks like that's what he's going for. All right. Town Hall is going to drop to the blip here. He's got the Hound out in front there, making sure that blip arrives and also follows it with a couple of balloons. To just make sure it gets the Archer Tower at the edge of the base there down. So the Super Wizard wouldn't be able to reach it. And they wouldn't be able to get any significant chains into it. But he will get the Town Hall down. More drama with that. Town Hall drops. And he gets a full CC pull on top of that. A little chunk of the base there cleared out. And he can now drop the CC over the right side there. Uses the Sneaky Goblin to make sure the funnel is clean. So the Queen doesn't get any funny ideas. And wander off to the north here. He's clearly trying to drive her down through the... Scatter shock compartment on the right side, and into the defensive raw champion. Now the then it goes in with the Lalo. Like little things like paying attention to where the defensive queen is can be critical in his tactics. So if the heroes are coming in from the right side, he'll still want to get the eagle artillery down early into the pack. So we may see like we saw in the last one with a small amount of Lalo coming in through the eagle artillery, and then the warden deployed wherever the Lalo is entering by the defensive queen. So we can make sure we get that ward ability to protect the headhunters, which is an absolute key thing that this attack always needs to achieve. But the king and the Rush champion are the ones that actually go into that right-hand compartment, and they're cleared it out quite nicely here. The queen will continue to travel forward. We'll see if she has enough punch to get through the defensive queen, but she'll very likely take out that multi-inferno at a fair minimum here. He's got the extra invisibility as well, so he can keep her protected and to keep her moving, but she does she does go to ability here. And that'll generate a bunch of archers, some pests are popping across the middle base here. He now goes invisible, make sure he gets that multi inferno down. He does ultimately start the Lalo with the warden in from the right side, which means the headhunters have to power through the cave before they can split off and go over to the defensive queen. The defensive queen almost went down to his queen, but the headhunters arrive, a lot of them, they quickly take down the defensive queen there and get the hound, and keep the scatter shot, and he will overwhelm the backside. Six more balloons left to be deployed here. 
plenty of spell support to get him through. He wants to freeze up this wizard tower, and then he can haste his way through the last couple defense. The pound is still alive, and he even has the extra clean up with the baby dragon that he can throw it back in there and not gonna drop guys. A couple of red bombs are going out there, but look at the hound the hound dinner in the pups right there was able to pop and deal with a lot of those red air bombs, so the big pack of balloons that were moving in that area aren't gonna be bothered by it. It is gonna be triple, an opening triple for both teams. Start this war off time. Leo will strike next. We we'll keep this triple train rolling here with a Tsui Hero Lalo sticking to the skies. Works so far for both teams. To happen once again. Throwing down a bat spell in the top corner there after a couple of rocket balloons. Third in and take out, was that an archer tower? I think it was an arch tower, but he will sneak in now the bats to work with a couple of balloons to search for black mines. Remember the the bats can't actually trigger the traps like the black mines to protect the dragon runners. So the balloons are critical to make that happen, but he's trying to push this this uh Dragon Rider in to go get the Eagle Artillery down by the looks of it. Skeleton Spell is distracting not only to get him through the Defensive King, but it's also keeping this uh, Defensive Warden distracted for a bit as well. But the Warden started to tip away that Dragon Rider. It's going to be a race for the Warden and the Dragon Rider to fight out there while he tries to peek away at this Eagle Artillery. But it looks like the Dragon Rider is not going to take any chances with it. He wants to make sure that goes down there. He'll go ahead and pop the Freeze, lock up the Expo, which also helps out his King as well. Uh, not gonna have enough punch there to get out that Grand Warden. The Yak will work on over there. The Queen is unfortunately chasing the Lava Hound. But that's like they're just still doing some good work over on the right side there. He even claps in that corner. The Red Champion will unfortunately have to fight for a couple pups here, but she's in relative safety right now. So she will continue on to get that Molten Inferno, and the troops out of the place there will be dropping out here shortly. He hasn't reached 50% yet, so. Town Hall is not activated, but it will activate very, very shortly here. They'll go ahead and freeze it right as it's about to activate, but it's going to need some extra support for damage output there on the Town Hall, and it gets it with the raid. Ward ability protects, and notice that the Headhunters were crossing right by the Town Hall, right as he popped their Ward ability anyways, and that protected those Headhunters through the Defensive World Champion. The Dragon Rider goes all the way to the middle that came out of his flame finger, locks onto that Molten for no Hound into the tanking position for the backside scatter shot, and it looks like he's got it under control here, guys. Not much is going to be able to stop this. There's plenty of balloons left here. The ward is still alive. Dragon Rider is still chipping away as well. He'll throw down the haste to get his way through this wizard tower and burst his way into that hard-hitting defensive Grand Warden that stopped up at the early parts of the attack there. But another fast attack here. A very, very fast one. Uh, coming out of Leo for a Lalo, at least anyways. Lalo's... Uh, <laughs> that uh, can stay with uh, 30 to 40 seconds left on the board here is a pretty fast way to make it happen. Spend that much time with a multi-phase attack, but there we go. Another triple space station putting that pressure on in this upper bracket finals. Striking second for the Queen Walkers. We have Klaus, and it looks like he's going for the Skelly Bat Donut with a Queen Charge into Dragon Riders. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do an attack like this to see how he wants to execute you. No poison, so clearly it is a CC attempt to take down with these bats and skeleton spells here, and it seems to be exactly what he's going for. Back to the single inferno here to protect the queen charge a bit. Okay, okay. You know what? This is actually a really, really clever way to do this, because it's mimicking how we would typically see a zap into queen charge dragon rider attack but it is actually going to be destroying the CC as well. So this is really, really clever here from Klaus. Honestly, I don't know how we've never seen this before. All right. Go through here, Klaus. That up, pressure. Ramped up here. Make Space Station continue to get these triples here. Very interesting approach. But I, def I can see the merits in this. I can definitely see the merits in this. Now, he only gets one rage for this Queen Charge. Only one rage total, so we need to be really, really careful with the overall incoming damage to this queen here, but without having to fight a CC, and with that single Inferno removed, he's off to a really good start here. The king is going to get uh, pushed into this scattershot compartment up on the top corner of the base, and we have no problem with that. The queen doesn't have to use a rage to get through the town hall. Nicely done there. Good spell allocation here. Just a freeze charges her through. And also would have potentially protected the healers if they were getting targeted, but they weren't. 
but not a big deal there as well. The queen gets a wall for it to travel into the defensive queen and into that multi-inferno, leaving up a couple of these battle builders, but that's not going to be a problem. Just leave those behind for later. He can pick those up late in the attack because he's still got a minute and 20 seconds to make it happen here. The king of the world champion able to clear out the catch shot on the top side. The world champion survives and keeps on moving up there, but she's not going to last too much longer here, but there we go. Warden down with the headhunters, crossing through to get the defensive world champion down. That gives some cover with the headhunters out in front to keep the world champion alive a little bit longer here, but she is going to ultimate. Okay, trying to make her visible. Trying to keep her moving, and it ended up wasting that invisibility, but the slammer... The Queen and the Dragon Run are still moving strong into the bottom corner of the base here. Guys, this is such a brilliant way. How how have we never seen anybody do this? We see the people do the zap into Queen Charge into Dragon Riders or into Lalo, but we never see it mixed with the Skelly Donut. So very, very interesting way to mix multiple different metas together here and create something new. Klaus always delivers. And he's got another triple on the board here for the Queen Walkers. They are both perfect so far in this war. All right, Marnal will strike next. Space Station Gaming with an Inferno Dragon Rider attack here. Something we don't see as often very much anymore. But this attack has has time in the high in the in the limelight here. They know how to use. I see Marnal use this attack a lot in the past. Been very very strong with it. Early ward ability. Lots of Inferno Dragons coming in on the. Same side as the base of the Town Hall, but not directly at the Town Hall. Just going down the line and using Skeletal Spells to just link it across the middle here. Keep the defensive King, Queen, Scattershot, and Grand Warden under control here with the Skeleton Spells. And also that single Furnal in the middle base there. Get a bit of protection there as well, but the Dragon Runner there is getting targeted as he save it. Well, doesn't save it. He's got a partial CC pull here. He needs to get the rest of the CC down. He's got the Skeletal Spell anchoring the defensive king down. More Skeletal Spells dropping through the middle of the base there. He needs to get the Confer Dragons to take out that single Inferno, but they also need to make sure they destroy the defensive CC and the Lava Hound that is still inside of it. So far, he's done a really good job of avoiding that Town Hall area with his heroes to make sure, the CC area with the heroes, to make sure that he doesn't pull that Lava Hound out. And now he's got a Poison that he can pair with his heroes to deal with Ground Skellies and never has to deal with that Lava Hound at all. World Champion drops to the far left side of the base here. If he gets through the defensive World Champion, he's in a really strong spot, but he also kind of needs to deal with this multi Inferno. And he's missing it right now. He'll drop in the Poison onto the defensive World Champion. And they're not seeing any ground skellies in that compartment. The Queen and the Royal Champion step in to fight off this defensive Royal Champion. And he loses his Queen to the Giant Bombs, unfortunately. The Royal Champion goes down. Hold up! He's not going to make it, guys! It's going to be the first defense. It was looking like it very likely was going to go through, but that Royal Champion tore him up. And a couple of Giant Bombs took out his Queen while... He wasn't even really taking that much damage. I guess the Multi-Inferno would do a little bit of damage to her, but the King will grab what he can out of the top corner here. He should be able to finish off that Archer Tower, and that will give him a lot of rain over the top section of the base, and he'll be able to circle all the way up there and get all this percentage and then circle back down. So he'll still pick up some decent percentage out of this into the 90s, but it is going to be a defense for Kazuma, and maybe a chance for the first lead of this upper bracket finals match. And like I said, guys, historically, whoever wins the upper bracket finals ends up winning the tournament. When you have the teams down in the lower bracket waiting to find out who's gonna be dropping down to, to face them, we have down there, currently on standby, it is Badzinger and BPT Esports are playing simultaneous with this match. And the winner of that faces the loser of this. The winner of that has to go up and beat the winner of this twice. Kazuma will strike next here for the Queen Walker. Now their opportunity to take the lead here. But the percentage, if they miss, is going to need to be very, very high. If they want to take the lead without the triple. They'll drive in the Queen Charge. To... Is he going to go through the Town Hall or go around the Town Hall? He does immediately run into a big test for him, so he's forced to drop the healers. It looks like he was trying to delay the healers and maybe get a different angle of approach here, but he's forced to drop them because of the test of arm. And he, uh, he is going to end up reaching over the wall here and be able to hit those Teslas, which may pull the queen too tight to the wall and kind of divert her overall pathing. We'll have to see where she passed, because she could try to circle in 
planner. Okay, he goes invisible. He makes those buildings invisible. He does not want the queen to backtrack over to that other Tesla and then wrap into the storage because he wants her to go north. He drops in a stinky goblin to go in there and trigger the trap with the haste. Give me an idea here. But those three goblins with the haste will quickly burst their way in there and take that storage down. And then with the queen going north, uh, the three goblins can go in there and trigger the trap at the town hall and secure the town hall while the queen's heal is. That made some safe distance away from it. Go right down the channel of the base here. There is that uh, lightning that's going to take out the single inferno so the queen can pass by there without any issues. Up a couple extra buildings around it as well. This king goblin onto the town hall, but uh, does he have him to take it? Is he doing it without an invincibility? He'll get it. He'll get it. He invested enough there. The queen did not go into the channel though. That could be a bit of a problem. The queen under heavy, heavy fire here, hanging on by a thread. That expo chips away at her. She doesn't have a rage that she can use to pop off, and these pups are going to be tearing her up. Got his uh, lava, his uh, the minions, I mean, to come down and assist. The queen is uh, maybe surviving here, but the expo continues to chip away. She's going to be forced to ability, and there's not much you can do about it. She does end up having the king break the wall, but the balloons are moving in heavy to the bottom side here. They get the eagle artillery down. Portability protects not only the balloons and the slammer, but also the world champion is moving underneath. And how to get the world champion saved from that defensive king. And lock onto the defensive world champion as well. His world champion goes to the middle base there. Locks onto the multi-inferno. Slammer is still moving strong here. Drops in the remainder of his wounds in the far left side of the base there to go after that Tesla from the beginning of the fight. But it looks like he's going to have enough to pull through here, guys. A very, very nice attack here from Kazuma using those sneaky goblins to take the town hall down. A nice reaction to control the queen's pathing. Her pathing wasn't 100% perfect, but the plan was solid. And he will be rewarded with the lead for the Queen Walkers. One miss out of six attacks, and that only miss of the war was a really high percentage. We remain very close here in this upper bracket final. Another... Queen Charge Attacker coming in from Space Station Gaming, it's Bernal. He almost exclusively does these Queen Charge Attacks and still one of my favorite players in the world to see because he always seems to have something weird going on with his Queen Charges. Like, he never just does a normal Queen Charge attack. He always thinks outside of the box, or at least the majority of the time. When he needs to, he thinks outside of the box here and gets the weird path with this Queen. And it looks like he potentially going to try to drive her in to the core of the base here, down this little channel that separates the data shot compartment and the town hall compartment. But he will then need the data shot under control there, so if the flame flinger will handle that though, right? Get a partial CC pull here. Stepping in some heavy damage there from the defensive warden. Wall breaks into the town hall. Okay, he's not going into the core channel there. I thought he was trying to weave her into the channel and that's definitely not the case here. But he can get all the damage off of her, and obviously the town hall pickup there is really, really valuable. You can always uh, round around the town hall if you can get your healers into a safe position, which he wouldn't have been able to do here, and has to get goblins in the town hall like we saw in the previous attack. But this one will have this town hall under control 100% here. Some decent value out of this queen charge. Can he pick up any heroes after that? That'll be the question here. But that plane finger is still moving strong, and with the queen holding the tension of that ground expo, that plane finger continues to stay well protected over on that right side. If the queen can recover with that expo off of her, then the damage on her is almost completely relieved and she can just kind of chill. But he is going to have the queen circled down south, I believe, here. And a single inferno could be a threat threat to her as it walks on now. But he's got the drag runners, move her to the top side. He goes ahead and freezes up the defensive queen. And with the king right there too? Yeah, the king's right there as well. So he's got the headhunt. No, where are the headhunts? Oh, what the oh, what's going on up there? This defensive queen is tearing him up. He just lost all the dragon riders? Because, oh! What's going on up at the top section of the base here? The queen is still alive down south. He almost lost the short champion. Now she goes down. The king deploys. He never got through the defensive queen. Whatever happened to the top compartment just absolutely tore him up. He's got all the defenses under control across the edge of the base here. The king is still gonna survive and he'll continue to pick up there the queen could still pick this up he's got the cleanup engaged on every single different side of the base here he doesn't have to go back after the defensive queen if the queen can get through the wall here and take down the storage and this inferno he can completely avoid the defensive queen but he ended up pulling a couple of grass glades that's gonna cause a little bit of a delay 
he will come back here, but he goes ahead and makes the he makes the ground skillies invisible to prevent the queen from getting distracted. Let the king handle those, and that might be the difference here. Five, four, three. No, he's not gonna make it. No, he's so close. Literally one shot, and Bernal falls short. Oh, that was clever what he did with the invisibility at the end, but it was uh not quite there. Not quite there. Let's try, buddy. All right, guys, here we go. If Space Station can stop Goku here, they can stay within reach of this boar. They can swing it back in the final attacks, but uh, do the so far here. See what Goku's got for us. Queen Charge into Dragon Riders. A little bit of Lightning. Lightning will very likely go after the single Inferno behind the Town Hall here, but the CC is pretty far offset into the base here, so... Won't engage it till much, much later here. Catches a couple of black mines there with his Coco Loons. The Queen is looking like she's going to weave right into the compartment. Now, he doesn't want to use the Lightning too soon. He doesn't want to activate the Town Hall with the Earthquake until he's actually attacking the Town Hall. So, right as soon as the Queen locks onto the Town Hall, then he can hit the Earthquake. That'll get the Battle Builders to repair their own huts rather than the Inferno. He can zap it out there and use it to get the Queen through that area faster. So, right as the Town Hall activates, then he uses the lightning. Quake always leads to force the battle builders to not repair the inferno to make sure you don't end up missing it. And that was absolutely perfectly set up here. But now, got a long way to go here. He's got plenty of rages. And like this is very similar to what we saw Klaus do. But this is the normal way that we see people do it with these with the uh, zap and then the drag runners and the queen charge rather than Klaus's weird approach there with the skelly donuts. So. Uh, definitely an out of the ordinary approach, and now we get to see how it was intended to be done normally. <laughs> or, uh, the, the meta, I guess we should say. They'll put in the Dragon Runners and the King up the top side there with the Road Champion of the board and all supporting them. They'll drive through the defensive heroes here. If they get through those defensive heroes, and it's Queen can reach the defensive Queen on the backside here, it should be in a really strong spot. The Queen is able to just walk out of that Town Hall core and into the scatter shot down south, and he has the funnel for her as well. There's Tess down there, so the Queen taking some damage. She has to pop her ability as a result, but she's able to quickly relieve all of the damage off of her with her ability, as she takes out three defenses with it. Nicely done there. Slammer. The Ego Artillery here. Water Billy's still active. He's got the freezes. They'll go ahead and freeze up the defensive queen. This is Queen's taking the time to get there. The defensive queen is still steady. He needs the world champion to get over there, but she's stuck on the Lava Hound right now, and that's a big problem. He throws down the Rage and the Freeze, and the minions step in and finish her off, and this is going to go down as he gets that defensive queen as the last standing threat here on the base, and the Dragons will close it out there with the queen out of the way. Easy day here. Kaku makes it happen. He's dragon rider queen charge attacks. I guess a variety of different ways that we're seeing it done here in this war. They're all very powerful. And in the right hands, they feel unstoppable. Nice job here from Gaku. They're up by two stars. Going to the final set of attacks here, and they're, they're potentially going for the perfect war here in this upper bracket finals. Selenio is live. We have a... Skelly Bat Donut into Lalo here. If you can get this triple, then maybe they can force Yuta to a one star. We know that Yuta likes his uh, queen charges, and he typically comes in opposite the town hall. He definitely has some near misses, but he has the opportunity now, while this attack is going, to change his plan and plenty of time to think about it to just lock in a safe two star. But let's see if he ultimately does take any right there. But to make it even. To make it even matter at all, we need to make sure that Selenio is able to get this triple right here. But he's able to get the CC and the Inferno down. Did he try to get that other Inferno? No, he didn't even attempt that other Inferno. Alright, so that's fine. He'll use the other skill that he has to protect his king and drive the king in with the support of the Road Champion on her right, or his right, to go in after the defensive Road Champion. He's getting a lot of damage early. And freeze it. I don't think he's gonna have enough to clear that compartment. That's gonna be a potential issue. Goes invisible though, and the golem picks up the tanking on those defenses. He gets the scatter shut down. Esco is gonna stay standing here. The champion will finish off the multi inferno. The defensive world champion stays standing, so his queen may end up having to use her ability to get through that. She goes invisible though. Gets the defensive world champion down. He's running low on resources to deal with the grand ward. He's not gonna get the town hall out of this. There's no way. He'll pop that ability. The wall break the queen through, but she's gonna die to the warden here, and she already used her ability, which means she will not have enough for the town hall. The town hall's not activated yet, so he can still get a path of the stone slammer to go in through the expo and take the town hall down. 
No sweepers are facing the town hall, so he should be able to pick it up there with the siege machine in just a moment, but he's just waiting for the percentage to gather up a little bit higher so he can get that to a target that town hall. Right about now would be a good time to drop it. Portability protects the Hound as the Hound goes over to the right-hand side. Also, protecting the Headmistress gets through the defensive queen. Strong Lala moving. Here comes that Spell Slammer to go in there and pick up the Town Hall. will take a Black Mine, unfortunately. I wonder if a Wall Wrecker would have been a better option there to go in there and take that. Go in early, but he will go ahead and freeze up the Town Hall and let the Drag Harder work at it. If it misses that Town Hall, then he may be in a really big bind here. The Drag Harder is doing some heavy damage, but the Ward is starting to chip away at that Drag Harder. And that Town Hall is still has some crazy damage here. Uh oh ho oh, oh. oh. Well, I guess it was triple or lose anyways. <laughs> A rough attack here for Selenio gets almost everything except for the town hall down. And it looks like this win is gonna go to the Queen Walkers, which very likely, like I said, I unfortunately won't go to cover the next rounds here to cover the actual grand finals because I'll be on a plane. Uh, to head home from California here, but in all reality, whoever ultimately emerges, whether it be uh, Space Station Gaming out of the lower bracket, or the other two teams down there, like I said, are uh, BPT Esports and Bad Singer. One of those three teams will emerge from the lower bracket, and when they get up to the upper bracket, they're going to have to beat the Queen Walkers twice. So, regardless who gets there, their path is insane ahead here. And this win, very likely, will be the result of this tournament and make the Queen Walkers our champion. It's not guaranteed yet. I'll uh, add it on to the end of the video here after we have a confirmed uh, win here for whoever ends up taking it and see if it ultimately gets overturned. But it is going to be the final attack here, and we're going for the perfect war. So cheer on the Queen Walkers as Yuna comes in to close it. Striking last, the closer for the Queen Walkers, Yuna, coming in with a Queen Charge into Lalo. Coming in opposite of the Town Hall, like I said, like I said, imagine if this was the attack that had to secure the war, because he didn't change the plan even with more time to go in for the safe two-star. He didn't change things up, but look at the scoreboard. Like, we are already at a win here for the Queen Walkers. They can literally swag the last attack at this point here. So no pressure on to you. They can just come in and show off and put it on a good show for us as they very likely secure this championship. He's got this Queen going after the Eagle Artillery here. The King deploys down the line here. A small funnel for him. Drive him into the scatter shot there. Doesn't get that uh, cannon down. And they want to throw a balloon onto it from it. King controls the defense there. Or the Rush Hamp if you join onto it. Rush Hamping will do the job. Perfect. You see, it's pulled there by the Queen as she gets the freeze and only lock up the PC. But also locks up the defensive warden and that defensive queen. That queen is picking at his queen here while he's fighting off the CC, so he does invest another freeze into it, but slow to get the pups down as the poison faded a little bit early. The defensive headhunter slowing down the queen's attacks and made it a little bit slow to actually take that Lava Hound down and gave time for that poison to fade, which is why that's such a strong CC if they slightly mishandle it. And he's still able to get this bottom farming spirit over there with the Queen and, or the King and the uh, Royal Champion. But is this Queen going to take the turn? He gets another Wall Brick. Now the single Inferno walks on her, so she goes to Ability. So step over to the single. They has the pop on her, so she's going to be delayed going to the single Inferno after that multi Inferno. Need to have it under control here, though. He's running out of resources, though. He needs to put everything else he has into the Town Hall takedown. The Slammer will push in there. Get the freeze. The Town Hall is not activated yet. His Queen Charge does go down, and it's not looking too great here for Yuna right now. Still needs to get the Town Hall activated. Pop that Ward ability a little bit early. He missed the Town Hall. He very well might miss the Town Hall. He, the Bloons are coming back to it. He will secure the 2-star, but it doesn't look like it's going to go through for a triple. It's enough for the win, though, no matter what. I'll, it, it didn't even have to attack to get the win. <laughs> he didn't even need to press the attack button to lock in the win here for the Queen Walkers. And they will move on to the Grand Finals. And as soon as this attack cuts out, I'll uh, bring it back there from my home office after I get back from California. And I'll uh, cut in the final result here in the video. But thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, thank you for putting on a good show here. The Queen Walkers and Space Station both performed very, very well. 14 stars on the board here for the Queen Walkers to lock this in. And a uh, pretty strong rally there for uh, Space Station.
space station at the beginning just falling apart a little bit at the end and a couple of slight misses there that one star obviously ended up coming in really really close there 96 from mar and all all right guys i'm back home now back in new york and we had the grand finals while i was traveling and you wouldn't believe it, but it happened after Space Station got knocked down to the lower bracket. They went down there. They beat BPT Esports. Then they came back in for the Grand Finals. They had to beat the Queen Walkers twice, and they did. In fact, the last war was a 15 to 14 victory. Perfect war for Space Station Gaming. And they actually did end up taking the Grand Finals Championship and won the Russia Clans Tournament. So congratulations to them and good run from the Queen Walkers. They put up a hell of a fight there put up some big scores but it wasn't enough in the end to take down space station gaming